Now to another function, the flow control for data links. Why do we need flow control? Well, the problem is that the sender can overload the receiver. That means that frames are sent faster than the receiver can receive them. How can this occur? Well, the receiver is more complicated than the sender. It has to check frames to see whether they are correctly received. And it might have to do other functions such as looking up addresses for demultiplexing. Also, one receiver can communicate simultaneously with several senders and together they may overload the receiver. So there has to be a means for the receiver to stop an individual sender from sending frames. And this is what flow control is all about. The received frames are stored in a buffer before they are processed. And if you receive it cannot stop the sender, eventually that buffer will be full and frames could be lost. And flow control is therefore necessary to prevent loss of frames. We look at um, a control mechanism called stop and wait. It's a straightforward protocol as you will see, but it has a performance limit and therefore it will be expanded uh, into something called a sliding window. For this section, we assume that all frames that are sent are correctly received. Then later on, we will consider how the flow control can be adapted to deal also with errors. Stop and wait protocol. I will show the workings of the protocol by two time axes, one for the sender and one for the receiver. Time is progressing from top to bottom. So here's an illustration of a sender sending one frame to the receiver. So you see that the frame is sent and some time later it has been re received at the receiver. If there was no flow control, the sender could continue send the next frame and the next frame and so on. And uh, the receiver could then perhaps be overwhelmed by all the data that has been received. But with the stop and wait protocol, the sender can send one frame and then it has to wait for an acknowledgement. The acknowledgement is the right given from the receiver to the sender to send one frame. So the receiver only needs to have buffer space for a single frame, the first frame that frame that's been sent. And once that buffer has been cleared, it can send an acknowledgement saying that it's ready for the next frame. And this is how the protocol progresses, very simply. If the receiver should be busy, for instance, receiving data from another sender, it can always stop a sender by holding back the acknowledgement and therefore the sender be not permitted to, to transfer a new frame. If we look at this protocol, we see here that uh, the link may not be used very well. We have the transmission time, which is the useful time uh, of the link. It is the time from the first bit of the frame until the last bit of the frame goes out on the link. We can compute that time by taking the frame length in bits divided by the capacity of the link in bits per second. And then you see that you get the length of one frame measured in time. The total time is the time from the first bit has been sent out until the acknowledgement has been received and the sender is permitted to uh, send a new frame. If we assume that the receiver is ready to, for a new frame, so it will send acknowledgement as soon as the frame has been received, we get the schematic that I've shown here. And the useful time of the link is then the transmission time divided by the total time. And as illustrated here, you see that the transmission time is just a small part of the total time. The U is, stands for utilization and is something we would like to maximize. We can get the utilization from zero up to 100%. And we would like the flow control protocol to allow a utilization of 100%, so that if the receiver can handle all the frames that the sender can send, then the link is fully utilized. And it's only when the receiver needs to stop the sender that the link is not used, because the sender needs to wait for the receiver. In this schematic here, we assume that acknowledgement does not take any time. And this is an uh, often made and quite reasonable assumption, because an acknowledgement consists of a data link frame without any data from the higher protocol layer. So it's the 
a frame header and the frame trailer, which are usually fairly small uh, amounts of data compared to a frame that also carries uh, data from a higher protocol layer. We also assume that the processing time for a frame uh, at the receiver is negligible, but both the processing time and the acknowledgement time could be added to the total time uh, of the denominator. So what is then the total time in addition to the transmission time? Well, it's the propagation that it takes for the signal to go from the sender to the receiver. We can compute that also in time. It's the length of the link divided by the propagation speed of the medium of the link. If the link is in a free space, it's a speed of light, 3 times 10 to the power of 8. If it's an optical fiber, it's slightly lower. It's 2 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Often, we assume that the propagation time is equal in the two directions, so meaning that the frame propagates in the same time over to the receiver as the acknowledgement propagates from the receiver over to the sender, because they will go over the same link in two different directions. So just to be clear, uh, the transmission time is the time measured uh, from the first bit is being sent out on the link until the last bit is sent out on the link. And the propagation time is the time from the first bit being sent out until the first bit arrives at the receiver. For a symmetrical link, we get the utilization being the transmission time divided by the transmission time plus two times the propagation time. We can introduce a parameter we call A, which is the propagation time divided by the transmission time. A is then the number of frames that we could fit back to back on the link. If A is smaller than 1, then less than 1 frame fits on the link. And if A is greater or equal to 1, then 1 or more frames fit on the link. We can also look at the length of a single bit uh, on the link, just to get the feeling for how many frames could fit on a link of a certain distance. If we take an optical fiber with a speed of light 2 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second, then a slow data flow of 1 kilobit per second, each bit would be 200 kilometers long. If we increase the data rate to 1 megabit per second, a bit would now be 200 meters. And at 1 gigabit per second, one bit would be 20 centimeters. So you see how a meter of fiber could fit five bits in one case, but a meter of fiber would not fit a single bit of one megabit to one kilobit per second. So what's the solution to the performance if we have A, which is perhaps even much, much bigger than one? There's nothing preventing us from permitting the sender to send more than one frame. Stop and wait was just one frame, but we could extend that. But it means that the receiver has to have buffers for the frames that the sender can send before the receiver can stop the sender. We talk about the sliding window, the window size being n frames. This is the number of frames that the sender will be permitted to send before it receives any acknowledgement from the receiver. We will then choose n so that we can get a high utilization for the link. We assume now that the protocol control information will include sequence numbers, which numbers the frames in an increasing order. Both frames and the acknowledgments will be numbered. The acknowledgments will contain the number of the next frame that the receiver is ready to receive. An acknowledgement acknowledges all frames with a lower number than the one th that has been sent. So if the acknowledgement is sent with 3, it means that it acknowledges all the frames with sequence number lower than 3 and the receiver is ready to receive frame number 3. This is how we illustrate it for a, a sending window of size 3. The last frame that has been sent is zero, and it has been acknowledged. So now the sender has right to send three frames, one, two, and three. 
as it sends them, th the window will shrink from the left. Once it, uh, the sender receives acknowledgement, the window will expand to the right, but never being bigger than three frames, because that's the maximum limit that the sender can have to send frames. Here's an illustration how it will work, and showing that even with the sending window or sliding window, there is flow control that is working, and so the receiver can stop the sender. Start with n equal to 3, and the sender can send 0, 1, and 2. It sends frame 0, and it has now right to send frame 1 and frame 2. It sends frame 1 and frame 2. So now you see the window is completely closed. It's not permitted to send frame number 3, because the window does not extend over 3. It needs to receive an acknowledgement for at least one frame in order to send one more frame. After frame 1 was received, the receiver was ready to receive frame number 2 and sent an acknowledgement for that. The receiver did not know that frame 2 had already been sent, because frame 2 had not arrived to the receiver and therefore uh, it was asking for frame 2 even though frame 2 was underway. Once the acknowledgement requesting frame 2 is received, it acknowledges frame 0 and frame 1, two frames, and therefore the sliding window extends out to size 2, because two frames have now been acknowledged. Sender sends frame 3, and after having received frame 2, the receiver sends acknowledgement asking for fr frame 3. Again, it did not know that it was underway. So, uh, the window can now extend with one more frame, so now frame five, 4 and 5 can be sent. Eventually, an acknowledgement arrives for frame, asking for frame 4. All the sent frames have been acknowledged, and the window is, is back to size 3, which is the maximum sending right that the sender will have to send frames. So if we look at the previous calculation, we now see that we have n times the transmission time that can be the link can be used for before the sender is halted and waiting for an acknowledgement. So for a given link we want to dimension n so that we can get a u which is uh, 1 or greater than 1. Of course we can never utilize the link more than to 100 percent but by having a u greater than 1 we know that the flow control protocol will not limit the utilization of the link. So the uh, dimensioning with flow control is to make sure that n is big enough to have a full utilization. And of course, it has to be reflected on the receiver side, which has to have n buffer spaces for frames, because so many frames can arrive before the receiver can stop the sender. If we are fortunate uh, and have an n which is too small, we will have the same problem we had with stop and wait, that the sender will stop sending frames because it's waiting for acknowledgement and the link will not be fully utilized and this is something we would like to prevent. So how large should the window be? Well if n is equal to 1 we have stop and wait. If we have a small a, meaning a link which has a few frames outstanding on the link between the sender and receiver equipment, uh, we can use a small n. For local air networks, we maybe have a sending window of 8 frames, which means that the sequence numbers could be 3 bits long in the protocol information. Well, if we have a large A, we also correspondingly need a large N. If we look at TCP, which is on the transport protocol, it uses 32-bit sequence numbers. It's not comparable directly to the data link protocols, because here the sequence number indicate byte numbers and not frames but it indicates also that you need a large sequence number when you have uh, distances which are global, also including that the communication path has been going over geostationary satellites high up in the atmosphere. 